What's up guys, my name is Your Heroes and welcome back to more Men of War 2. Now, when I uploaded, two days ago I uploaded a video of is Men of War worth it? You know, the price tag of it and a lot of you absolutely loved that video so thank you so much for it and I appreciate the views and I appreciate the comments. A lot of you did comment so thank you so much for that and we are really close to 2,000 subscribers. I believe we're like two subs away so if we can really hit that mark that'd be absolutely amazing amazing thank you to all of you who have subscribed i really do appreciate your support but today we are going to be looking at whether gates of hell is really worth its price tag and by doing that we are going to be looking at some gameplay today now as you know gameplay is one of the most important i feel it is one of the most important part of a game Especially when I feel like a game is quite high priced, such as Men of War 2. And a lot of views have been reviewed as mixed, most of them being quite negative. But then again, it could change. I do believe Men of War 2 still has a really good potential to be a really good game. Hopefully, maybe be on par with Gates Fell, but that isn't till a very, very long time. But we're going to be not looking at the multiplayer, but we're going to be playing one of the campaigns. Now, I have been doing a lot of playing through, that's why I haven't uploaded any Men of War 2 in a while, just because of I really wanted to get an idea of how this game really, really worked compared to Gates of Hell. And with, you know, me completing, you know, 33% of the Russian and American campaign and 17% of the German campaign. Now, I have not played any of the multiplayer yet, but I have been doing some objectives, which I really do like. Today we're going to be playing one of the Soviets campaign, the first one, which is The Storm Begins. Now if you'd like to see more gameplay content like this, then make sure you subscribe, like this video if you're new, because we are really, really trying to push out, or I'm trying to really push out Men of War 2 campaign videos, just because I think this game still has quite a lot to offer, and I'd still like to go through it and see what you guys think of it, so make sure... Put your comments down below what you think of Men of War 2 so far if you've played it and do you like the campaigns compared to Gates of Hell. But we are going to be playing the first one which is The Storm Begins. Let's just get straight into the gameplay and I really do, I hope you enjoy this. Let's get straight into the action. Alright guys, here we are. So this is the gameplay. I know, I'm quite excited for this. When I first played this game, I was very excited to see what the gameplay was like. I'm in a show first thoughts where... It is a wee bit cartoony, I have to admit. I like how bright it is compared to Gates of Hell. You know, Gates of Hell I think is quite dull. But then again, I do think that this game is brighter, which makes it a wee bit more bearable to see the game compared to Gates of Hell. But then again, it just looks a bit cartoonish, and that doesn't make it very realistic. But then again, this is a game that's just come out. So again, take this game with a pinch of salt, as the game is still developing to be a better game. And just a wee, again, PS, I guess, P.S, whatever it is, is that apparently there's going to be a quite a major big update tomorrow coming out, which is meant to improve the graphics, the bugs are in the game, and I believe sound effects as well, you know, the gunshots and everything like that. So when watching this, please take it with a pinch of salt as a big update is coming out tomorrow, which will basically improve the game to be a lot better. So yeah, I hope this kind of gives you a really good idea by hearing the sounds just now that it gives you how different it is to Gates of Hell. And if you did a, you know, a direct comparison to the sounds of Gates of Hell to Men of War 2, you'd definitely hear the difference because I definitely already hear the difference that this sound effects in the game of guns does again feel a wee bit cartoonish. It doesn't feel really realistic, but again, Give this game some time, it will turn out to be really, really good. Something I uh, I have to absolutely criticise though with this game is that look at the minimap. Uh, by the way, I've been talking over these guys. They need to shut up and let me talk. The minimap, oh my goodness. I can barely see, when I first went to this game, I could barely see my minimap and my guys. And the contrast to the fact that your guys are green, the icons, you know, the if you look at the minimap, I'll zoom it in for you guys. That the icons, you know, in green are yours, you know, yours to control, and the ones in blue is the AI to control. So you can see all the blue ones here is all AI, where the ones are green 
is all ours. But that's really bad for people who are colorblind, you know, getting mixed up. And even when I was first looking at it, I was searching for, like, my guys all over because there's no actually clear distinction between the two besides the fact that they're blue and green. So uh, that needs to be improved upon. Anyway, let's just get straight into this. Let's, uh, let's get straight into our... Uh, so the first objective is that we have to capture these mortars. And by the way, most of the buttons are the same as gets fell. If you want to view your objective, it is the letter O. You can see we have to fight off the infantry um, battalion and then we have to take control of the mortars. So that is the first two objectives that you can see. And something I would always, something I do actually like. A, let me talk! Jesus. Something I do actually like about this game is that you can see the little, you know, gun. Uh, icon you can see above them you can see that this guy's a machine gunner and this guy is uh, just normal infantry but you should all actually think you can see it in gates of hell um which is kind of annoying but this one you do so i do kind of like that right so what so we need to capture the mortars which we have done um apparently this guy's facing the wrong way so i'll tell him to face the other way something i also do like about this is that the fact that when you tell these guys to go in a when you walk tell them let me speak! Oh my goodness, man. These guys just will not let me speak. When you tell these guys to go in a certain direction, you can see if I tell them to go and walk in straight on here, you can see these little blue little circles. They're all, that means these soldiers are going to get in line, you know, right beside each other, such as this, which I absolutely love because when you do that in Gates of Hell, when you tell your soldiers to move about in Gates of Hell, there's no actual line they kind of just go all over the place and there's no actual line there's no actual you know formation that you go in but whereas this one they do it automatically wherever you tell these guys to go their finish point will always be upon a straight line which i really actually do love about that so big props there and something also a big positive is that when there's a couple guys left, Gates of Men of War 2 will give you hints on where your guys should shoot. So you can, you can see there was like that red arrow pointing saying, this guy here, kill him, kill him. And also something you can see is that there's a blue and there's a red line. The red line indicates the enemy, the enemy's, you know, progression towards your base, whereas the blue line shows that you and the allies progression towards the enemy. So as you can see, if we move our soldiers forward, you can see that this line will start to move forward a wee bit. You can see that it's now moving further and further back, you know, all the way to the line. And you can see that on the minimap as well, which is absolutely tiny. You can see the red line is going further and further uh, out, which is not very good for them. So I like the clear, I do like the clear distinction on that to show that the enemy is actually getting pushed back, which I really do love. Uh oh, this is not good. Oh no, we need to get our guys back. Something I also do love about this game is the amount of emplacements you can actually modify. So you can see here that I'll show you, for example, the mortar. You see that even though the mortar's got an emplacement, you can see at the bottom that you can either do a fortified position, which allows you to fortify with even more sandbags. You can make it dig a trench for the cannon, you know, dig a dig hole around the ca mortar. Or you can discamouflage it so it's like covered in bushes and leaves. Which again, I also love. So you can see that there's a there's a whole lot of options for sandbags and all that, which again I really do love. Right, I need to get these guys on a on a machine gun because get on. There we go. Get. We need to get these guys into really good cover here. This guy needs to shoot him. Okay, we need to keep moving because obviously we are struggling here. By the way, the way to ping, you know how you can ping in Gatesville is just by the same button, it's by pressing N. But I might do a hotkey button, you know, tutorial for this map, uh, for Gatesville as I've done with, uh, sorry, for Men of War 2, uh, as I did with Gates of Hell. So, and by, you see, by the way, you will see me compare a lot of controls and gameplay and graphics to Gatesville because it is the most comparable comparison to this game. These guys just keep talking, man. They're so annoying. You've had your share of fights on the road, haven't you? The Germans broke through on the flank. So we had to get into action right out of the gate. Two batteries were completely destroyed. But it looks like we drove them back behind the hills. All right, Major. Take your positions. A new attack is coming. And I'm afraid this time they'll... 
So something that this game actually also does during gameplay is that it gives you a wee little tutorial so you can see if you want to uncouple a gun from a vehicle or horse, use the button on the hot bar with the open chain link icon or select both units and press space. I absolutely love the fact that it gives you wee hints along the way and also I love how kind of historically a wee bit historically accurate it is as you know the Soviets didn't have a great amount of technology during their time compared to the West so you can see that they're using horses to to hold along uh, 80 guns which is really really cool and I really love. Anyway let's get set up uh, and we will set and what I'll show you by me what the fortifications how how amazing the fortifications can be in this game. And I'll put maybe two over here and I'll maybe move this, uh, the howitzer over to here. Now I have to say the movements, I have to say the way like they turn is very like, it's actually quite alright. You can see the fact that it's, it's a horse, the fact that a horse is running with an 80 gun with a howitzer in the back. It's quite unrealistic I have to say, but I do get the idea of it. So they have 56 seconds till the enemy starts to prepare. By the way, if you want to demount uh, a horse, you have to press B. You know, in Gatesville, you press G, but in, in Men of War 2, it is B. So there you go. So if you want to get your guy off, you press B. And we are going to get a few guys on the, on the guns here. And as you can see, my 80 gun is now properly set up. This is a 50, this is this too. So it's a 57 millimeter, as you can see at the bottom. I can either do a normal fortification, a fortify this position, you know, with sandbags. So basically you'll see the difference. One's got a roof on it and one's just got a normal. You can camouflage it, which I'll actually do with all, with all your guns. That is something I would always recommend with 80 guns of tanks. Always camouflage it as it has less chance of getting spotted when it first shoots. Hit the vehicles first. If possible, support our infantry. As you can see, it really does do it well. And I'll show you one just with the normal sandbags here. You can see this is one just with a normal sandbag. Whereas the this one will just be with the, like a big proper you no know, big tall sandbag. And this one will be again heavily fortified as well. And you'll see this as you go by. Oh, we have another 80 gun, which I didn't even see which I'll put over here. Oh, sugars, I'm a bit late to it all. Oh no, it's fine. This one is a field howitzer, so I will just turn this thing around. So you can see that, you can see the way the difference is, is that this is a little sandbag here, whereas this thing, you can see, is properly set up in a big tall, you know, anchor of a sandbag like this. It's absolutely amazing. I love the flexibility of sandbags you can put here. Again, the same with this. Look at this. You can see that in a camo net, it, it's also within the sandbag, which I absolutely love. And for this AT gun, which I have at the back here, I will put a, I will put a sandbag and I'll put a howitzer. Uh, sorry, a camouflage and a normal sandbag. With the howitzers, by with the mortar as well, you can do the same. Um, I'll actually show you a better one where you can actually build, you know, a proper ditch. Uh, I'll show you with this one here. You can build a, a trench for the cannon. And the way you can tell, by the way, that it builds a little trench is that, as you see, that beside those little light bulbs, you can see like a little tr uh, shovel with a little trench. You can see that kind of it's building around it from that. And as you can see, it's now built a little ditch, which I think is absolutely awesome. Now, you can't do these for all mortars and all types of AT guns depending on the different types of one from what I can see but most of them you can do it for which I absolutely love for, the, for some reason for this mortar you can but I will set up a, a camo net here so it doesn't get spotted as much same for this one as well and I just love the absolute flexibility of that it's really good again press B to demount your horse to demount your guy as this will give you more um, more guys to basically give you on the trench line. Um, and I actually don't know where the rest of my guys are, to be fair. I think they've all disappeared. One thing, although, that I don't like about this is you can't... There's only third-person control. You, you can't... If you press T, it'll give you, like, different options. Whereas in Gates Hell, it'll give you direct control. So that is something that is I don't like. But something I do like about it is that you can have a line... And it shows you also on the enemy vehicles that it shows you what is hit. So as you see the burst radius of the 80 gun on where that area is going to hit. So you see lots of smoke going off. 
this game is really actually more advanced than you actually think. Again, there's a lot of better thing in here than there is Gates of Hell. And you see on the enemies that this time there's actually a, a kind of like an HP bar. And I will show you what I mean by uh, by the line. You can see there's like a, you see there's, oh, I need to do it. You can see there's like a line. You can see that it goes green when the, when you can hit an opponent, when you can penetrate a target. Whereas if it's red, that means you can't. So you can see 114 or 73 point, 79.3 meters away. I was actually going to show you before the AI blew it up. But it shows you the actual distance between your AT gun and the enemy, which again, absolutely brilliant. I, I I don't know how I feel about this game. I really do love it in the sense that it feels more lively than Gates of Hell. I don't know why. It kind of just feels this more... I don't know. It, it feels like a lot more excitement in this game than there is Gates of Hell. But at the same time, I think Gates of Hell is just, it's just a wee bit more, I don't know, realistic, I guess. So as you can see, I am just bouncing off this guy because I have no penetration. And... There you go. So you can see that also gives information about, you know, about when you hit a tank, what's been hit, like the gunner's been killed, the gun's damaged. And I love the after effects of a tank burning. Again, a wee bit arcadey, but again, the game just came out, so give it a wee bit of credit. I just realized these guys have been sitting here the whole time. Uh, I don't know where to even place these guys. Just shoot them. This is not good. We need to keep firing there. They have so many here. They just keep coming. They're coming in a charge. Oh, we got him. Right, okay. Next one, next one. Is this tank here. There we go. Hull destroyed. Ain't gonna be using that anymore. We need to aim a wee bit higher. Not far. There we go. It's down. And we have pretty much won this. I love the kill feed as well. Again, just very cartoony. But I do I do kind of like cartoony, I have to admit. Even though it's not the best, I think it makes a wee bit more attractive. Even though I said cartoony is not more realistic, it's more arcadey. But I, could, I do kind of like arcadey games like these as it, it makes it a wee bit more fun. I just see that I've lost my cover. By the way, this thing can actually turn into a howitzer as well. You can see that even though it's a 50mm AT gun, it can also turn into a howitzer. So you can see that with the gate, the gun is aiming up so it can if it acts as a howitzer. With it now the cover being gone, it will need to recover again. So what you could do, you can actually now beg a cannon, a trench for a cannon, and it acts more of like as an artillery. And again, you can see that little sign means that it's being built and it's quite a short time so it's built very quickly. And just like that, it's kind of built into a, tr a trench line. You can see it now it kind of aims up as a artillery piece, which I really do like. Again, you can now cover it with kind of camouflage, which reduces its uh, notice period of being spotted. As you can see there, I absolutely love that. It makes it really cool, really realistic. And I think we're actually almost there. I don't know what, I don't know how long this attack is going to go on for because they keep bringing out Panzer 3s and Panzer 3 Fs and they just keep coming back. This is actually quite tough. I'm going to take direct control of a gun here. I need to kill them up. There we go, there's one down. And again, the real just kind of like the little bar. Oh, there you go, absolutely brilliant. I need to change to HE. So a one way what you can do is if you change this, sorry, the way you can change ammo is if you press one twice, which changes the ammo to an AP and HE. So this time for infantry, I'm going to need a uh, um, I'm gonna need AP, uh, sorry, HE. And by the way, if you want to uh, get your guys to move, you know, to move to a place, you press spacebar to, you know, put it down and then press spacebar again to bring it back up again, which I really like because the Gates of Hell doesn't actually have a button, I don't think, to, you know, move AT guns, you know, from the standing position, from, you know, the cup standing position to the you know, the sitting down position, I guess, the best way to describe that. We need to kill these guys off, because this is... They, they still have a tank over there. They have a Panzer three, which we need to kill off. Where's our AT gun? We need to try and kill this guy off with, uh, with heat rounds, I think it is. Did we miss? How did we miss that? There we go. It's done. And there we are. We've completed it. Look at that. Absolutely brilliant. Cease fire on vehicles. I repeat. Cease fire. 
Two attacks have been repelled. Well done! Can we entrench, Comrade General? Wait a little before digging into the ground. Retreating border guards reported to me that the Germans have set up a crossing to the north of the village. If the reinforcement comes, you and your battalion lieutenants could catch the Germans at the crossing by surprise and throw them back across the river. Oh, tank crew. Who are you? Where are you from? The 67th Regiment of the 34th Tank Division, Comrade General. We set out an alert and met Popel, our Brigadier Commissar. Surely you two know each other. Of course I know him. Popel said that your 45th Division here needed assistance against the Germans. I'm here with his permission, but I'm afraid that Colonel Vasilyev, our division's commander, will have my head for such capriciousness. <laughs> ah, my friend, no one will take anything from you. Just help us drive the Germans away from the crossing. We need to destroy pontoon bridges to prevent enemy reinforcements. And that is where I'm going to leave it today, guys. I know this isn't the full mission, but I just wanted you to give a brief, you know, game not brief it's now been what like 22 25 minutes now of gameplay of recording sorry i should say so this should give you a really good idea of what this game is to come if you want me to upload maybe part two of this video again leave a like subscribe if you're new again we are really close to, to that 2000 subscriber mark so stay tuned to the channel and we are almost there so guys thank you so much for watching if you like to again just see more content and the rest of this video and see the kv1 kick ass as kv1s usually do then stay tuned to the channel as more content will be coming for this other than that guys i say thank you so much for watching and our support and i will see you in the next video see you later and goodbye